drummer. morning. Welcome to the Vineyard Church. So glad you're here with us today. When you walked in, if you were a guest, you should have received a guest packet and had a card in it that looked like this. We want you to fill that out. And if you didn't get a guest packet because you are a regular, these are in the seat right in front of you. So be sure to fill it out. This is how we keep in touch with you from week to week. You can let us know what's going on in your life, if you have a prayer request, if you would like to take next steps, that kind of stuff. Be sure to fill that out. Also, on the sides, we have communion, and we'll be taking communion today as a family. 
in family units. So we'll be doing that a little bit later. But you can also take communion when you want to, right? Is that that's still how it works. So if you want to take communion, that's fine. We want you to do that with us. And we'll take a take some time here, a few minutes to do that. But we're so glad you're here. And uh, we hope that you you sense the Lord's presence when you walk in and and uh, hopefully you'll learn these songs here pretty quick too. So <laughs> a love so strong as a love that called my name never was a love so fierce as a love that took my shame never was a love so true as a love that shed his blood never was a love so wide as that precious crimson flood love has lifted me oh my my his love has lifted me as high as the heavens as deep as the seas as wide as the river is my savior's love for me oh my my his love has lifted me
Prayer log of when I last used. And how do we, how do we figure that out? How do we figure out how to be more like Christ? We spend time with him. And one of the ways that we spend time with him is spending time with each other and fellowshipping, commun communion with each other. And so we're about to share in communion. And if I understand correctly, we do this as groups. Joel is going to kind of describe that for us a little bit more. And over to my left, your right, and your left, my right. We have two stations, and so, and correct me if I'm wrong, it, you can move over to that station, you can pick up the elements and bring them back to your seat. That's how, how we do this. So, so if you go in your family groups, do that. We're just going to play some nice soothing music while, while you do this. And uh, so. And we'll continue on in worship. And we'll continue on and make this part of our worship. Pastor, his name was Paul. At first he was called Saul, but then he got saved, changed his name to Paul. And he told his church, he said, you guys down in Corinth, he says, when you take communion, he said, take it very serious. He said, always remember what Jesus has done for you. And if there's sin in your life, he said, you know, confess it. Ask God to forgive you. Because he said, you know, that's going to hinder what I want to do in your life, is what he was saying. So this morning, Lord, we just come before you and we say, Lord, we may have done this wrong or that wrong. Just let your Holy Spirit come right now and bring forgiveness to our hearts. Because, Lord, as we fail you and we are aware of our failures, we want you to come and help us 
to change or quit or be better at that or quit acting that way or quit. You know, we want to be like you, Jesus. We want to we want to exemplify you. And right now, Lord, we ask that you'd come again and touch our hearts. We remember that you gave your life on the cross. How much you loved us. And we eat together. And Lord, we take covenant now. We take covenant by drinking the grape juice signifying your blood that was shed for us. We drank together. Thank you, Lord. And we worship you, Lord. We worship you.
Spirit, we invite you to come. We know you're here, but we invite you to come and bring your power, bring your presence, bring healing, and bring restoration into this room this morning. We just don't want to be touched by your presence. We want to be filled with you and your goodness. And so we ask you to come and fill us with your presence today. Come, Holy Spirit. Father, we seek you. ask you to come. is deep, his love is wide, it covers us, his love is fierce, his love is strong, it's furious, his love is sweet, his love is wild, and it's waking hearts to life. His love is deep, his love is deep, his love is wide, it covers us, his love is fierce, his love is strong, it's furious, his love is sweet, his love is wild. It's waking hearts to life. The Father loves and sends His Son. The Son lays down His life for all. He lavishes His 
Senior moment. Welcome, everyone. Um, it's great to see you here. Hope you noticed that we have a new sign as you came in on the front of the church. Have you noticed it? Um, that's another step in our facelift, and uh, we're preparing. We're getting drawings ready. We're going to be starting on the new bathrooms soon, so I'm sure that you'll uh, really enjoy those when that happens. Uh, this uh, wall is going to come forward, too, and we're going to have uh, an enclosed auditorium. So um, all of that is part of that original facelift. I know it's taking forever, but we are getting there. And bear, bear with us and have patience. Let's just thank the Lord for uh, what he's doing for our church. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here this morning. 
thank you so much for allowing us to develop this building and to develop the property that you gave us to look after. And we pray for your grace in those efforts. In Jesus' name, I pray. Speaking of welcomes, we welcome a new little baby into our midst this week, Seth Campbell. And he's not here yet today, but he's, uh, you know, we're definitely growing our church and we have a lot of little kiddos around. And that's really fantastic. So whatever you all are doing, just keep doing it because, you know, it's really helping us. On the second Saturday, which is on the 12th of March, um, we're going to be having our regular uh, monthly uh, worship meeting on Saturday night. And so um, I hope you put that in your diary and come and join us because we always have a fantastic time of worshiping God together on those Saturday nights. And then Vineyard 101 is on Sunday the 13th, right after that. Now, this is your last chance to sign up. So if you really want to move forward and uh, you want to get into any level of leadership, please do that because this is one of the requirements. And um, it will really help you to understand what we're about, what we believe, and what the next steps are for you. So sign up at the back this week um, so that you can spend a nice lunchtime with Villard and Diane and learn a bit about more, a, a bit, little bit more about the vineyard. Easter picnics on the 26th. We got a full calendar, full schedule. I know those of you who've been to these before, that they're, they're really great. Um, lots of fun food and fellowship. And put that on your calendar too. That'll be uh, out at the Hunter Ranchette. Um, this may be the last time we do it out there according to Village. So if you wanna do that, uh, see what the tradition of this church has been like then um, make sure you come on, on, on the 26th. On the 27th, there'll be a baptism as well. So if you're interested in being baptized, please sign up. Talk to Villard afterwards. Um, last but not least, there is a uh, the, 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 the Sunday morning class, which is called Explore the Bible, is taking a break. Um, this coming semester, starting next week, we will not meet, or starting this week, we will not meet for the next 13 weeks. But instead, we're doing Acts 1 through 12, which is the uh, Explore the Bible session that was supposed to be done uh, in our community group, John Winkle's community group. So if you want to carry on with that study, that lesson, speak to John afterwards, and I think John will come up here and give a little bit better explanation next Sunday. Now, let's just uh, ask for God's blessing on the offering. We're going to receive the offering now. Thank you, Lord for what you've given us. And Lord, I pray that you will receive what we are to give back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now those cards that you filled out, you may put them in now or you may put them at the, at the end of the service when Villard invites you and challenges you. Over to you, Pastor Villard. church uh, we have foot washing and uh, so we're going to take turns washing each other's feet today it's going to be a really fun time hope you took a bath lately it uh, would really facilitate that uh, sometimes it's a little rough washing 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 people's feet when uh, when you know the smell kind of overwhelms you a little I have so many things on my heart, I, I hope I get around to preaching, but uh, maybe you have been praying silently for a different outcome, but uh, I, I'm really excited about Easter. We have a, a four-part series starting up today, and some of you, uh, I think I've got that, yeah, some of you have already gotten one of these in your packet uh, this morning. And so you can kind of see today's the longest prayer. It's not the longest prayer Jesus ever prayed, but it's the longest one we have recorded. But you can kind of see where we're going. And uh, on that third Sunday, he endured the cross. We will, uh, we're going to build the cross again. 
You know how many times we're going to keep doing that. It's kind of been running to the ground a little bit. We've built that thing so many times. Maybe next year we'll just uh, bring the same cross back and use it again. You know, won't build. No. But anyway, we nail our sins to the cross that Sunday. The kids come out and join us. That's a great Sunday. And then uh, the next Sunday, uh, we cover that old rugged cross up with the flowers of love. And everybody goes to the store and we help H-E-B make money by buying their flowers. And we bring them. And that, that cross is just beautiful with time it's over. And it, it is a beautiful thing, you know, when you think about what Jesus uh, has done for us. So what we're doing is to try to kind of help you get into this. There's three devotional books back there. Uh, you don't get one of each. Uh, just one of the three. You can pick uh, each one. One is called Rise, the other, other is called The Victor, and the other is called Third Day. And if you want to do a devotional during these three weeks, uh, four weeks, before Easter, you may want to pick one of these up. They're back there on the table. You'll see the display. And this is just to help you kind of think about uh, uh, the whole concept of what's happening in your life. And next Sunday, uh, if everything goes right, uh, we'll have a little cross for you on the first Sunday uh, next week. And we're wanting you to carry that little cross with you all week and just pray for somebody, pray for someone. Uh, and, and because I really think you have friends that might be willing to come. You know, they, if they know they're going to learn how to build a cross, they might come, you know. Or if they know how they're going to hear about uh, the love that, that's going to come forth in this series, it's all about love, isn't it? Uh, there's some suffering involved, but it's all about love. It's a great time. Now, we had a great time uh, with uh, this uh, last week with the fries, didn't we? Uh, you remember the boat? Yeah, he told you about the boat in his garage. Well, there's Mike. And uh, he sent that to me, and I thanked him. I said, well, I was going to talk about that anyway, so that'll give me an illustration. So he, he hadn't got it out of the garage yet. It's still there. And he apologized, he said, you know. But what was the whole idea behind this? Is you're not going to catch any fish with the boat and your, everything in the garage, right? I don't care how expensive a boat it is. It'll never catch. I don't care how you get filled with the Holy Spirit 150,000 times. And you may be running over with the Holy Spirit. But if that's not propelling you, if it's not launching you out into the world, uh, you're not going to catch any fish, right? You're, not gonna, you're actually not going to affect the world any. So the whole concept that Mike tried to get across to us, and Betty, is that we need to launch. We need to move forward and, and go forward to touch people's lives. And so this whole year is, is kind of being given over to this, to this area uh, of launch, this whole idea that we need to take what we got. It's good stuff, isn't it? We know Jesus Christ. He changed our life. And, and by the way, if you didn't know it, Kurt's birthday is today. And yeah, and he doesn't look 65, really. He doesn't look that. No, he... <laughs> Cross, yeah, there you go. And his dad and mom are here today, too. So uh, we appreciate our overseers in our church. Don and Jonah are overseers. Kurt and Katie are overseers. It's good to have overseers out there running EMS, you know, because uh, you never know when you're going to need somebody to pray for you out there. So I appreciate that. It's great to have you today. But I, I hope that you will, as we consider this whole series for the uh, Easter and then going into the rest of the summer, we have got a gob of these books, and they're not, I didn't get a bunch just so I'd have a bunch. I got a whole bunch of these because I really believe it tells you, actually, uh, what this whole summer, this whole summer, this whole year is going to be about. It's going to be about launching. It's going to be about the power of God in our life. Uh, I think it's a year that God wants us to affect people around us a little bit, to touch their lives. And so I want to share with you a prayer today. And that prayer, as you can say, see, is actually a prayer of launching the church. Now that's amazing, isn't it? Because see, Jesus is getting ready to die on the cross. He's just a few short hours away. And, and he prays, first of all, for himself, that he will, will carry out what God's told him to do. And that's where you ought to start today. God, I'd like you to help me carry out what you've called me to do. The, the question is, are you hearing what the Father is saying to you? So what is the Father saying to you? Well, he may be saying, come to church and just keep getting filled up and filled up and filled up until you pop. No, that's not what he's saying. 
He's not saying it at all. Matter of fact, I, I, I got these, these bowls. I thought they were pretty for Easter, see? I mean, it's all Easter. And, and then I got sponges that are Easter. Now, do y'all make soapy water right before you go to bed and, and wash the cabinets off and get it all cleaned up? Because you don't want to get up in the morning to all that stinky dishes. You don't do that? Well, that's what my wife makes me do. She says, I'm going to go on to bed and take a bath and, you know, soak. And would you clean the kitchen up? Now, she doesn't always do that, just about 99%. But anyway, uh, the, the truth of it is, in the next day, have you, ever, have you ever gone in there and there's that soapy water? There it is. And it's, 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 it's actually gummy. It's just, you reach in and you pull that sponge out and it's just so gummy. So, of course, you, you drain it. But I'm convinced that the church as a whole, they have been filled and filled. And they've been sitting in that sink so many <laughs> days that, that the Holy Spirit is looking down at Jerry and saying, man, it's got a stinking mess down there, you know. They've been taking in all the water. They're, spun, I mean, they're, they're filled with water. I mean, they're dripping with that stuff, you know. See, unless you ever squeeze your life out, that's the only way you can fill it back up. And if you don't squeeze it out, it, and, and you know, you've got a friend next door that's just waiting on love, just waiting on it. And so you squeeze your life out. Now, you're ready to go again. You got that out of it. Nothing's getting stale or, you know, old. It, it's, it's not rancid anymore. It's just pure, sweet love that came into your life this Sunday. And just think of everybody starting going out and pouring out. Just think how much of the Spirit of God we could squeeze out this week. Because I, I don't know, probably 80 people or more right in here, 75, 80, 90. That's how many sponges need to be out there this week. We're all launching, aren't we? Not with stale water, not with dishwater that's been there overnight, over a year, 10 years. <laughs> no, no, it's good, pure. You just got filled this last weekend, many of you did. Many of you got so touched, so overwhelmed, you were just crying. You were so touched. And so this week, well, guess what? You got fresh water. And Jesus says, what kind of water? Living water. And so when you go out there and you let your life do that, wow, then you're you're, you're ready to come back to church next week and say, wow, I need more. I need more. That's what launch is all about. That's what Jesus' prayer is all about this morning. He's praying that he'll finish well. Did you know one day God launched him into the world, didn't he? Launched him right into the world. He lived his life. He's going to say here in just a minute that he, he finished the task. And so now what is he doing? He's praying, okay, I'm going to pray for my disciples. I've been training them now for three and a half years. I'm going to launch them. So he tells them, he says, don't leave Jerusalem. Don't leave until you have powered, until you have, ex you have been filled with some fresh water. And he says, then I I'm going to launch you out. And that's what happened. And sometimes a thousand or more people got saved in a day. It says they turned Jerusalem upside down. I really think that's what the church should be doing. And I really think we've, we've, we've got the stuff. We've got the stuff that's in us. It's just a matter of now, kind of, this whole week, I'm not kidding you, I've had that rubber band on, and I, I've been thinking, everywhere I, I, I'd go, I'd say, God, is there anybody here, you know? And you know, that's a stretch, isn't it? It's a stretch to be looking and, and watching and trying to think. And it seems like I never ran into anybody that looked really bad enough to pray for I mean, you know, I'd say, God, there's no sick people this week, you know. Well, I think God is really wanting us to start looking, to, to anticipating. And so as I read this prayer, and then at the end, I'm actually thinking, we're actually going to let Lynette start it off and give a testimony. And I'm going to try to get done quick enough that we can do this all before 12 and you can be a part of it. But I, I'm really hoping that there's two or three more that you, you'll share. We can't do too many, of course, because I'm going to preach too long. But we're going to try to get some of you into this because I want you to hear some of the things that are happening. And next Sunday, we may do two or three more. And just keep letting you be a part of what God is, God is doing in your life. 
So first of all, he prays for himself. Now, this is so long, you'll have to go to your Bible or bring it up on your iPhone or bring it up on your laptop or your iPad and don't send email or, you know, post things. Just, just, just read the scripture with me, okay? Unless it's an emergency, of course. You know, about, you know, come eat lunch with us after the service or something like that. Okay. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed. Now, I don't guess I gave you the scripture, did I? John chapter 17. Whole chapter. Verse 1 all the way through is this prayer that he prayed. Long prayer. Incredible prayer. I mean, as I've read this over, over, and over this week, I couldn't, I couldn't get enough of this prayer. I'm not kidding you. I would sit down to study it, and I, I got lost in just reading it. It is so powerful. Now, if you have any doubt about prayer, read this scripture, John 17, which I'm sorry is not up there. Read it until God rejuvenates your heart about prayer. Prayer changes things. I love what, what Mike got into my spirit. He said, you never pray without something happening. Something always happening. Aren't, you, aren't we that way? Sometimes we just, nothing happened. I prayed something, nothing happened. Listen, it, it, if you read all the way through the scripture, it talks about bowls in heaven. That prayers are actually saved up. If they're not needed right at that moment, God saves them up. And he pours them out at the necessary time or the needed time or the right time. See, God is not limited to, you know, one day of the week. He's, 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 he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. And, it, and he's, time is not a thing to him. So you can pray now and it could touch your grandkids 20 years from now. Incredible concept. So we look at this. He prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son. Oh, that I would, he would say that about, you know, that I could say, Father, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in this church, and would you help me to glorify me, lift me up as your, your son, your pastor. See, it's, this is, he's praying for himself, that your son may glorify you. And you know what he's going to do there? He's saying, glorify me, because you're going to raise me up, and that's how you're going to, the cross is the manner that God's going to glorify Jesus. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given, to, given him. That's a big theological thought right there. God is the savior of the world. Now this is eternal life. This is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God. Some more theolog theology there. I mean, that is, that's, that's solid stuff. There are no other gods, see. And to know Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So Jesus set him up, set himself up as the Son of God, that there is no other way to salvation except through him. And we know that's true. And we're not condemning any other religion. We're just saying there's no other way. I have brought you glory on earth. That's, that's such a sweet statement, really. Jesus is not bragging about himself. He's saying, Father... I've just done everything you told me to do. That's, a, that's the way to end life, isn't it? That's the way to end a day, you know? That's the way to end a month. That's the way to have a new birthday. Lord, I've done the best I could this year, this month, this day. And live every day like that. If you hadn't, you'd just say, Lord, I'm sorry, but I'm ready to go again tomorrow and I'll do better. By completing the work you gave me to do. Verse 5, and now, Father... Glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Some more theology. He's saying, I came from the Father before the, you know, I was there before the foundations of the earth. He sent me down here and uh, I came, I finished the task you've given me to do. I have with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. Did you know when somebody at work and you, the Spirit says to you, you know, go do something. Go talk to them. Go, go say something. You know, they're struggling in their marriage maybe. Or they, God says, you know, they're really struggling financially. And he tells you, see, God's speaking to your heart. Now, if somebody gives you a word, keep this in mind. We are humans. And I may say something to you that is not exactly totally what God wanted to say to you. And I may miss it, mess it up. You know what I mean? 
But if you get afraid of people messing up or you messing up, you'll never venture out. Now, I always say to people, you know, I'm human. And and here's what I feel like God's saying, that he wanted me to pray for you, that God wants to bless your finances. And, you know, I, you know, now usually I've made some kind of relationship with that person. Or I, I would say, you know, I just saw you struggling. Is there anything I could pray for? And maybe God's already said to me in my spirit, they're really struggling in their marriage. Or they've got a teenager that's just, you know, I know none of our teenagers are, but every once in a while they get a little rebellious. And, and you know, he really needs prayer. or She really needs prayer. See, and when you do that, you cautionally go up to people. You, you say, you know, I don't know, it just seems like God is saying to me that, you know, you really may be struggling with, with your teenager. You know, you talked about him the other day, and I don't know, I just felt that. Is there anything I could pray about for, for your teenager? See, you approach it cautiously. And you say, you know, if this doesn't mean anything, you just put it on the shelf and forget it. See, we're not trying to be God. We're just trying to be obedient. We'll fall short at times. But he says, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have, they have obeyed your word. You see what's going on? And Jesus said, I, I know they have come to me, and I have told them what you said, and they have heard it, and they have done it. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. What's he building here? He's building a case And he's thanking the Father, and he knows the disciples are right over here listening in. And he's trying to help them see this whole thing as it ends up. So, Because he's getting ready to really say, now guys, you're in charge. And you you follow these guidelines as the Father has helped me. And I'm just talking to my Father and saying, thank you so much for helping me go through all of this. And the disciples are listening in, see. And that's kind of how your life goes. It's like, Lord, thank you. And people hear that around you. They see how appreciative you are of what God's doing in your life. They see how much you love him. They see how much God's working in your life. And the disciples are hearing this. He says, I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. Jesus was getting ready to be glorified on the cross. He was actually saying, thank you for glorifying me, Father. But now help me glorify, help me to die the way I ought to die. Help me to die in a way that as people look at me on the cross, they will see how much you love them, how much you care. And that ends that. So the first thing you need to start thinking about is, if we're going to be launched, we've got to think about, oh God, you know, help me. Help me get my life straight. Help me get my, my everything worked out because he wants to launch you. In Philippians, there's a scripture that talks about God exalted him to the highest place. Because why? As he died on the cross, he glorified his father. He finished the task. But in Matthew, it says, all power in heaven and earth is given unto him. I'm just reading these two verses because... I want you to realize what I'm, I'm talking to you this morning about launching is that we can never launch without being filled up with him. You can never launch. You've got to have that power. You know, rockets take power. We have rocket leaders because God has to be in us with his power. But when you're filled and you go out and you start letting yourself being squeezed into other people's lives, It's that power of love that's just moving into their life. What power? The power that's in Jesus. Jesus disarmed the principalities and powers and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. It, if, If you don't believe that scripture, you'll never launch. There are huge weights that Satan wants to tie on to you so you'll never launch. It's fear. It's doubt. It's like, I don't know, I can't talk to people, or I can't do this, I, I can't, you know, so you, you, you just give up. See, personalities only cause you to maybe do it in a little different manner. They don't cause you not to launch. You may just hand the cookies to them and say, you know, just glad to have you all as neighbors. 
the next guy, he's an extrovert. So they go over there and they invite them over to eat steak and have them over. And, you know, I mean, they're just out there grabbing people. It doesn't matter, see, how you launch as long as you launch. But that's the power. And he has disarmed those powers so that you are actually free to go forward. Number two. The second portion of Scripture here, and then he prays for the 11 apostles. One of them, you know, has, you might say, jumped ship, didn't go all the way, failed miserably. We know that another apostle is brought in, but some think actually Apostle Paul was actually who fills that 12th spot. None of us really know. We also, but we do know that these men that Jesus is praying for right here, that their names are written on the foundations in heaven. I mean, they're pretty important. You know why? Because he used them to actually write our Bible. They were apostles. There will never be apostles actually again in that level of operation. We're not still writing the book. You know, the book has been complete. It's canonized. It's finished, you might say. Now, God is still revealing himself to us, but it'll always tie in to that, the word. That's why you go back and you say, when, when you talk about it, the, the people that were getting saved in those days, they were reading the writings and the teachings of the apostles. And they were the teachers that were going forth. And that's why right now we, we look to the Bible as our teacher because it was written down so that we might understand the truths of God. So when you talk about these men that he's praying for, you're talking about, like, very important launching people. Very important. So he says, I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me. Not praying for the world. What Jesus is saying is not that I don't want the world to be saved. I'm dying for the world. But right now, he says, I'm praying for these disciples because see, it's those disciples that's going to go talk to their neighbor. It's those disciples that are going to write down Scripture that we're all going to follow. So he's praying for these 12 because it's the first launch. That's why we want to end this service today praying again for you because, see, we are the ones that's going to make the launch that will change people out there. And so he prays for these disciples. They're very important. And that he says these words, all I have is yours and all you have is mine. And he says that for a reason. And glory has come to me through them. All I have, see, you've given to me. But these apostles that's come to me, they have brought glory to me because why? They have obeyed your teachings. Now, just keep thinking about this. He's building a case here. Jesus is actually in his prayer building a case of truth that's to, to actually take the church in a few short hours and send them out to change the whole world. What a launch. If Easter is about anything, that's what it's about. It's about going out from the church. It's about the power of God that came into the church with the love of God and moves out of the church into the world. He says, I pray, not for the world, but for these 12 men. And glory has come to me through them. Verse 11, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of of your name. You know that scripture I gave you earlier. He has all power over principalities and unseen forces. He's there. Okay. The name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. What's it say about his name? It's above all names. See, when you use the name of Jesus, we're using a name that has power that stirs the heavenlies. I mean, it's a name that when you speak it, I have seen people that were shaking by the power of a demonic force just instantly come still when you say that name. It's a name that's powerful. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that Scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world. Here you get a glimpse of the disciples hearing what he's saying. So that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am not of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. See... When we come to church on Sunday morning, it's pretty easy to be a Christian here today, isn't it? 
I mean, I, I saw some of you. You ate too many donuts. But as a whole, you did okay today. I mean, you probably need to cut back a little in that area. Maybe we need to order less. I don't know. Help you out. But, but the, the truth of it, it when, when you read this, he, he's saying, my prayer is I don't want to take them out of the world. I want them to be in the world normal people. We're normal. That's why that book is so important when you, when you think about the title, Naturally Supernatural. See, it is natural when you're filled with Jesus to be supernatural. Because when you touch somebody and they have an emotional healing, a physical healing, a psychological healing, a spiritual healing, when you do that, that cannot be done except by the power of God. It's, it's an incredible gift, isn't it, that God has given to us. And this week, last weekend as we went through this, it's like I'm just sitting there just enjoying watching everybody get out of the bleachers. I mean, it's like, wow. I, I think, I, I, I don't know. You think he would embarrass you if you hadn't, but, you know, I don't know. He seemed pretty determined, didn't he? You know why? Because he knew that you wanted to get out of the bleachers. He knew you just need encouragement. You just need a little push, you know. You just need someone to say, no, come on down here. Go for it. See, it's never going to happen unless somebody challenges us like that. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify, the word is the same as consecrate, myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. When he says sanctified, he's saying, when I'm raised up on that cross, that's my sanctification. Actually, he's saying, I'm modeling for you. I'm modeling what it means to be sanctified. See, the reason Jesus came to earth was many reasons you could read about. But the reason he came to earth was to die for your sin. Be buried and raised again on the third day. That's why Easter is so exciting. Because that is the overall purpose that he came to earth, to show us that he could conquer hell, death, sin, and the grave. All right there. So when, when God sanctified him, he's saying, I have been sanctified for this purpose. I've been set aside for this purpose. I've been consecrated in my life for this purpose. What does that say to, about the disciples? He's saying, okay, I'm modeling it for you. I'm living this life. I'm loving people. And I'm gonna, God's going to, I'm going to be crucified. They're going to take me up. I'll have to suffer some. But I'm going to do it in a way, whatever I go through, whatever pain I suffer, whatever problems I go through, I'm going to do it in a way that brings glory to the Father. So you're sanctified by God to help you be a, a model for the people around you. You know, our kids, we want them to model us, right, as parents. Not our bad moments, our good moments. But really, that's what your kids are going to do, like it or not. You're modeling for them how to handle problems, how to handle difficulties, how to work through things, how to have problems and deal with it. You're modeling it. Jesus modeled it for these disciples. And so what they realize is, okay, he came to earth. He did all this. He did a good job. He sanctified his life to be that. Now, sometimes we as Christians, we think, well, you know, I just want to be a Christian. Did you know it's not possible just to be a Christian? You are a model. You are a living example. That's what we are. And isn't that what we want to be? Don't we want other people to have what we got? You sure? I mean, don't we want them to know Jesus? Don't we want? We don't want them just to go to hell or heaven. I mean, we don't want them to miss, to miss hell and go to heaven. Sometimes we, we, we say go to hell, but we didn't mean it, did we? No. Uh, <laughs> We're, we're supposed to model to people, hey, being a Christian is a fun thing. It's a good thing. Even if you have to die on the cross. Even if you have to pay some price. Are you with me? You still glad you're a Christian? Then you don't have any choice. This prayer is actually for you. It was for the people before you because they were going to witness to these people and they would become Christians and these people would witness to these people and they would just keep pouring this juice out year after year after year and go back and get filled up again and go out again. 
And it was just changing people's lives. You know, Christianity is so simple. It is just so simple. Get filled up with Jesus and go give it away. Get filled up with Jesus and go give it away. Get filled up with Jesus and go give it away. It's, it's very simple. And this prayer, you'll read it. You'll begin to find out where you are. You may be over here, kind of the end of something, going into something new. You may be right at the disciple level right there. Did you know that there never were more apostles? But there's many disciples. Now, there are people that have ascending power. It's, it's like they plant churches. They have an apostolic ability to plant churches. But when you talk about 12 apostles, this is them. And, and that's why we follow, and, and the church is based upon the foundation. I shared that before. But now we go on to us, the third group of people. Then he prays for the whole church. Let me read you these two scriptures. I, I gave you the foundation of the city upon them, names. Matthew 10, 16, Jesus said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Number three, then he prays for the whole church down through the centuries. My prayer is not for them alone. Verse 20, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message the disciples' message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I mean, I know that's a simple thing, but Jesus is actually showing you how we're all one big family. And he just wants to be sure you understand that. You know, the apostles actually and the disciples that they won to the Lord, they're no more important than you are because here you are witnessing to the next generation. And your job is just as important as their job. And your kids will have the same importance on their job as you have on yours. Verse 22, I've given them the glory that, they, that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them... And you and me. You know, I can't express this too much. But the, the one thing that I believe Satan works the most on in churches is making us not one. Uh, I don't want to prolong that thought. But it is so easy for Satan to come into a church that loves Jesus and cause the synergy just to explode. And everybody's energy is going everywhere. It's going here, it's going there, it's going there, it's going there. And the energy is not coming together. And I'm talking about when people come together and they get a hold of a, a plan, they get a hold of a purpose, they get a hold of that vision. A church, it's unstoppable. And you can see Jesus is saying, I want them to be one with me, just like, just like you apostles are one with me. Just like you, Father, you're one with me. Do you see the incredible oneness there? So anytime, anytime that you feel something in your spirit that you're getting ready to say, that you can just see how it's going to divide, you may need to stop just for a moment and say, God, help me say this right. Why? Because you so want the unity of Christ to move on. It may be just your... You know, the inflection, you know, how you say it. It may be just softening it a little. Or you may say it, maybe you're supposed to say something a little stronger to somebody like, man, I really appreciate you. Now, there may be things that's bugging you to death, but, you know, all the, we've got to somehow say things to one another in love. And that means the unity of Christ is so very important. And it's not an easy thing, I'll tell you, because some of you people are tough to love. I mean, I have to go home and say, Diane, please help me. No, nah, y'all are perfect. We don't have any bad ones in this bunch. We've got, no. Uh, they're going for get in trouble. <laughs> Amen. I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity. That almost rhymes. To let the world know that you sent me. Did you see how important the oneness is? And have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you've given to me to be with me. 
Now here's a closing prayer that I think he's looking back to his apostles. He's looking back to the 120 that went out of the upper room. He's looking at the thousands that got saved down through eternity, that, through all time. I think he's looking, and I think his heart actually kind of gets excited about the fact that all the kids are going to be coming home soon. All the kids are going to be coming home soon. I don't think there's anything I get more excited about now than when all the kids and grandkids, and they're all coming home. And I get very excited about them leaving. <laughs> but you know, for a couple of days, it's just the world evolves around them. It's just, it's just heaven on earth. Thank God they grew up and left home. And I'd advise you, if you're a teenager, grow up and leave home. Don't stay with mom for the rest of your life. Amen. Get a job. <laughs> get a job. Yeah, get a job. Yeah, before you get married, get saved, get a job, then get married. And that's for Lily, and, and uh, I'm trying to find them. There they are. Yeah, yeah. And they already have it. And they're in counseling. I'm excited. More babies. Church is growing. Yes. Well, I shouldn't have said that either, but. Verse 24. Father, I want those you have given to me to be with me and to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you. And they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself be in them. Now, I guarantee you, you cannot comprehend that prayer without going back and reading it again. I would really advise you because you're in that prayer somewhere. You're there. And, and here's something that will blow your mind. He knew your exact name. He knew the very year you would live. He knew the very day you would live. He knew when you would accept him as your Lord and Savior. He knew when he would fill you with his spirit. And he was expecting you to squeeze in other people's lives. We so need to be filled, don't we? I mean, if, if you're not filled, you don't have anything to give. And that's why we close today. I'm going to... I'm gonna. It's kind of like second steps concept. It, it's uh, that we we want to give to you, because see, I believe this is going to happen one of these days, right there. And if and if you look at this scripture, the Lord Himself shall descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump trump of God, and then shall the dead in Christ rise first, and we which remain shall be caught up together with Him. The word caught up together means to go out and welcome your king. To welcome your king. Did you know Jesus at that point is going to come and he'll set up the kingdom of God on earth. And all things will come subject under him. You know, I'd kind of like to, I'd kind of like to meet him on that day, wouldn't you? But you know what would be more exciting? I'd like to be able to say, yeah, I poured my life out over here and I poured my life out over here. And these ten people that are beside me here they're people that i just let the the juice of your holy spirit flow out of me on i think that's what's going to make that day so exciting i think that's going to be much more exciting than me being there i kind of want to be there but but it would i it you know if i don't see my grandkids there if i don't see my kids and then i start realizing you know how many times i i i think i'm going to remember that it says everything is going to come and everybody that's, that tells about these death experiences, it's like a scroll just went through and they saw all their life, even within a minute. They saw everything. Because why? Because our life is, is a real life. And it must be used for His glory. I, I think we ought to get excited about that and start saying, Lord, let your power in my life go out and touch people. Now, we had this whole weekend. We, we'd call it like... Launch 16, that means in the year 16, we want to try to challenge you to launch. So you're going to be hearing that word a lot. Hope you enjoy. Now I want to tell, what I want, I want Lynette to come tell you. I, oh, I need a, I need a handheld. Uh, you got it, okay. Uh, she's going to tell you, come on up, Lynette. And uh, don't knock my water over, but uh, the, uh, I want her to tell you, because see, she, she actually tried to do this immediately. Yeah, 
Yeah, she actually did. It was pretty awkward. Pretty, pretty awesome, I think, okay. uh, this year. And, and be thinking, I, I got two or three of you I want you to share and uh, after she shares. Yeah. So Saturday night we left hungry. So we decided to go through the drive through at the taco shop down here. And the car in front of us stalls. There's like cars piling up behind us. This young kid gets out of the car. He's like, hey, guys, sorry, my car won't move forward. You're going to have to back out. Michael's on the phone. We're getting ready to eat. I jump out of the car. I'm going to go pray for that guy's car to start running. <laughs> this poor kid. So I get out. His window's down. He's stressed out. He is trying to pull the car into gear. It's an automatic, and it, it will not jam down. And so I just go, can I pray for you <laughs> that your car will work? He's like, yeah, whatever, okay. So I just said, all right, Lord, I just pray that this car would start moving, this, get this guy his food, and get on with his day or his night. Guess what happens? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so I feel like the biggest dork ever. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. I gave it my best shot. I just I prayed in Jesus' name. I got to go. So I get in the car, Michael backs out, he goes into order, and I call Kristen. I'm like, oh my God, I prayed for this guy. It was totally embarrassing. Nothing happened. And so sure enough, a couple minutes later, I'm sitting there just waiting for Michael to get in with our food, and I see his car zoom around the corner. So at some point, the car actually did get, get into gear and go. But I, I stepped out and tried. I know what you're thinking. Well, that stuff's easy for Lynette. She's talkative. She's you know outgoing, whatever. No. I was a nervous wreck. I've never done anything like that really before. And so if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Would you all stand? I saw what time it was. I have preached too long. But I want you to do something. I want you to launch each other, okay? You know, there you are. You're standing by somebody right now. Maybe your husband, your wife. You may not want to do it. You may want to turn around and pray for somebody else. But I'd like for everybody this morning, just in these last few moments, I'd like for you to turn around, get with, and just pray that God will use you like a Lynette this next week. You know why? how I used her? He first of all gave her some courage. She believed what Jesus had said. See? Jesus never promised that everything we do. He said, pray for the sick, and then he says, I will raise them up. Always when you pray, something happens. Something happens. So as you pray for somebody, it could be a three-second prayer for you that have a lot of faith. You that don't have much faith, you may go for 10 minutes, you know, to keep praying. So I hope whoever prays for you has a lot of faith, okay? But I would look like for each one of you to pray with one another. Don't be embarrassed about praying. We actually believe in this stuff, don't we? We actually believe this is going to work. I actually believe he's going to launch. And we're going to keep some more testimonies. Come to me, write to me, let me know. And these are the best things for it. Because what we're going to do is start passing the bags again at the end of the service. And we're going to be asking you to fill out second steps. And that's going to be just for these, these pieces of paper. And if you forgot to give offering, we'd accept it. But the main thing is these. We want these. We want you to launch. We want you to maybe ask what you want to do for second steps. Where are you going? And uh, what you want to do in your life. Fill out back your prayer request. Fill out back your message that this is what I'm praying God will help me do. This is what I want to do in my life. This is how I want to launch in my life. What is the Father saying to you? That's what you got to do. Now, I'm going to pray with you. And then music is going to come on, and you'll just have a time to just pray with one another, and then you're free. Dear Lord, we thank you for your people. And, Lord, I feel like I have been given one of the, the neatest jobs and that is just to tell people how great you are, Father. And Lord, I want to I wanna be more excited about doing the things that you tell me to do. I want to be so excited about that. I want I want to launch, Lord. I don't want to miss somebody out there that I'm supposed to pray for. And I know it'll be scary. And now, Lord, as everybody prays for one another, let your spirit just pour over them. Let your Holy Spirit come. We ask it in your name. Now take a few moments. Take a few moments. Turn. If you see somebody looking around, go help them out. Go, go get with them and just pray for them. Pray for those teenagers. Don't let them get away. Pray for them. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. <laughs>